Hi, my name's Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And welcome to this interview with a Trading 180 uh, member by the name of Justin. And Justin has uh, agreed uh, to um, actually reached out and said to me um, that, you know, he would be willing to do an interview. Um, privately because of the, uh, the the level of service, I guess, and do a testimonial uh, because of the results he's been getting from uh, Trading 180 and the way that we've, you know, I've turned around his uh, his trading and uh, he sent me a really, really nice message. And um, I thank you for that, Justin, as well. Much appreciated and for doing this interview. No problem. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So um, again, just uh, to get started, I guess, um, Tell us and anyone who's listening what your background is with regards to how you got into uh, trading. Uh, I first started trading, I started doing stock options. Okay. Back in like 2008. Wow. And uh, I I learned a couple companies really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, And I wanted to do more of it. um, But life kind of happened and I set it aside for a few years. Okay. And so I think fast forward to like 2015, 2016, uh, I wanted to get back into trading stocks and uh, I, I started button up against the pattern day trading rules in the mm-hmm. States. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I, I had heard about Forex and <laughs> I, I realized like I can trade that all day long without having to, to deal with the same constraints. You get ah. similar leverage. Yeah. And so that started appealing to me. And, uh, I had, I, I guess, you know, the worst thing that can happen to you when you start trading is that you don't know what you're doing and it works. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Been there. Mm-hmm. So I, I had the curse of having some amazing early successes and thinking that I was smart. And then the market took all that back. Yes. Um, and so, you know, it's been a, it's been a journey of working through psychology I've tried algorithmic trading. I've tried a lot of different things and they all worked well for a few months and then they would blow up. And mm. so. Okay. Why, um, why do you think they would blow up was um, on, on, I guess on maybe on hindsight. So do you think it was the system uh, or what you were trading the strategy or do you think it was more you? I think that, a combination of I didn't respect and and understand risk management that well. Okay. Um, combined with I was trading lots of great technical strategies with no context or understanding of what the market environment really was. It was ah. just sitting in front of a chart and you know MACDs and RSIs and these setups and all those things and. Uh, you just kind of throw that stuff together or you look at momentum indicators and this and that. And it's, it's all great. Um, but if you don't understand what makes this thing go up and what makes this thing go down mm. fundamentally. Mm-hmm. So I got into doing currency strength meters mm-hmm. um, on larger time frames, And then that was cool, but it got a little frustrating because by the time you see the setup, the move had already happened. Absolutely. And And so I was like, well, this isn't any good. (laughs) So I started figuring, I'm like, somebody (laughs) understands this and understands what fundamentals are. And if I can just find something to show me like how to study this stuff and put it into context, I should be able to marry these two together and, and crack the code on this thing. Yeah. And so I found Trading 180 on YouTube because you're one of like two people that actually talk about fundamental analysis. And so I would watch your weekly uh, YouTube videos brilliant. and uh, started learning lots of stuff from there. OK, brilliant. Um, yeah, a lot to unpack there. So um, similar to many people, including myself, right, we get into the you know the, the trading via different ways we all come in to make money and as you say um one of the worst things you can do is 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 trade not knowing what you're doing um and actually make money but you don't realize that you don't know what you're doing right, right? you just start making money and then all of a sudden yeah, yeah you're just thinking oh this is easy and i thought yeah. i was a genius it was great 
Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I've been there, mate. And um, it was interesting, as you, as you said, and again, you kind of arrived to the same conclusion as me um, with regards to, you know, you, you buy different technical strategies and you trade certain ways and, you know, and um, it, giving the market context, the context being, you know, fundamental analysis, right? Right. Which was, which was, which was really interesting. So when it came to fundamental analysis and you were saying that there was uh, you just felt that there was something more there had to be a bit of context uh to to trading which i al always believe as well right there's something beyond the chart yes we can see with our own eyes what candlesticks are doing but also there's uh, a certain i can't remember what it's called but there's a certain bias i guess oh, i wouldn't call it a bias but there's like a perspective where we can both look at the same chart yeah but see different things right yeah it's like a it's, a, it's like a human psychological thing and um you know someone could say that's a that's an uptrend someone could say that's moving sideways that you know someone could even make an argument for something moving downwards so context is is everything and there are things there are forces and elements the macros moving price i guess um you know uh moving price um uh you know, beyond what we can see. So um, fundamental analysis. You said I was one of the only two people that, you know, that you saw that was really kind of covering fundamental analysis. I'm sure there's obviously more, maybe just, you know, maybe the people that you would uh, maybe looked for. But what was it about maybe what I was saying that um, that, that kind of resonated with you? Uh, for me, it was that you never gave a trade idea you 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 only focused on understanding gdp interest rates um central bank monetary policy mm. and i think i watched a video where you'd followed the euro for like a whole year yeah yeah and you showed traded, yeah i traded the euro yeah. those are those are proper that that was a tr that was a trade idea i had for like two years straight just yeah. showing the euro euro dollar so once i saw that i was like this is the context that I'm looking for. And if you can predictably understand this landscape and, and then go at your trading ideas from that understanding, the, the quality, because I guess for me, it became like, you know, it's, it's very easy to make money when you get the context right. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to lose just as much money if you don't understand the context at all. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you've getting, gotten burned on a couple economic news releases where you think, something is positive and then you watch your trade go against you mm. i i was always left with saying like what just happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know yeah uh, and so when i started doing trading 180 it was it was probably because i joined i want to say in june july mm -hmm. of last year probably mm -hmm. july yeah and so i spent probably the first six or seven months unlearning <sighs> six or seven years of psychology and bad habits and all that stuff. Like I understood what you were teaching. I learned the fundamentals, but I, I had to unlearn the habits of like, I need to be right there for the news event and I got to get this opportunity and just that compulsion to get in because the market's moving. Yeah. And I had to learn patience and the discipline to like wait for the setup. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So now it's it's a lot more comfortable to understand like, hey, you know, because I take what you teach and I think I even refine my stuff down a little bit more. Yeah. So I don't take a lot of the trades, but the ones I do take, I have extremely high, you know, analysis, understanding, you know, justification, reason and expectation mm -hmm. that in the medium term, this thing is it's going to move in this direction and. So I give myself a few more pips on the stop losses and yeah. I sleep well at night, you know, holding <laughs> trades. Yeah. And, and, that's a, and that's a brilliant, that's a brilliant, you know, point and brilliant points that you, that you make, right. Um, you know, with regards to just things like risk management, stop losses, technical analysis side of things. But what helps with that is understanding what's, you know likely to happen in the medium to long term right and right. you've been with me for for a little bit how long have you been for, been with me for so it's it's pushing nine months now pushing nine months and at the beginning 
probably there was maybe a bit of a learning curve, right? Absolutely. I was completely confused because I'm an overachiever. And so okay. once you start introducing fundamental analysis and all these things, yeah. I I went crazy, right? So <laughs> I'm going to central banks and I'm reading all these yeah. articles and I'm looking at all this stuff and what about retail sales and what about, you know, CPI and, you know, what are all these different things? And it was a lot. And then the more that I kept jumping on the mentorship calls and looking at the videos and, and, and being in it, you always kind of brought us back to it's, it's just about the impact on GDP interest rates. Um, and uh inflation yeah. and so it was like okay let me stop worrying about all the other stuff yeah let me just focus on this and then you know now i go into reading each article with an intention to find how does it impact one of these three measures and i don't worry about all the rest of that stuff yeah um so it's like do i have a general hunch an idea of what's going on does the data support the narrative or to what extent is there a divergence between what the data shows and what the narrative is. Mm. And once everything kind of lines up, it's go time. You know, that's it. And um, within that nine months, obviously you've seen a massive, massive improvement with even just with regards to seeing how the fundamentals play out over time. Yeah. And you know, you've, you've, you've gotten better at reading um, the fundamentals again it was a bit of a learning curve but once you started to get to grips with it and seeing how the fundamentals play out and how you know you can pick the the best or, or the, the pairs that are likely to trend right in 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 certain directions etc um how has how has that been for you seeing you know the fundamentals play out and the risk sentiment play out in real time uh it's been it's been magical for me because it, the one thing that I was missing was a logical framework and perspective to evaluate what's in front of me. Yeah. Right. And yes. as you do more of it, you build more confidence and a better yeah. understanding of how all this plays in. Yeah. And so, you know, with time and, and you, as you, you know, I guess I went in the beginning of following everybody's ideas mm-hmm. to then kind of doing them in parallel. And now I, I do my own analysis yes. and then I check what I came up with against, you know, what, yeah. what the other guys in the group are doing. Mm-hmm. And so once I started seeing that I'm looking at the same stuff everybody else is looking at and I'm seeing it the right way, <laughs> you yeah. know, different, different kind of take in perspective, but we're all generally tracking in the same direction. That, that, I was like, okay, it. yeah, I can do this. Absolutely. You know? A- absolutely. Justin. And, 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 and that's, Ultimately, I think maybe I've said this to you and I've said this many times in the group, right, is that we're not, this is not a signal service. This is not something where I'm calling trades. I'm, you know, teaching, I'm trying to teach traders how to fish, right? If you catch somebody right. fish, you know, they eat for a day. Teach someone to fish, you can eat for a lifetime, right? If I suddenly was to, you know, just say I wanted to stop trading 180 or, you know, God forbid something happened to me where I couldn't be around and run trading 180 anymore, you could then go away and still, you know, trade and catch fish for yourself, right? Right. And that, I, I know how to go out and and get articles and develop my own trade ideas. It is. Absolutely. And document, you know, why and all that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, it's it's nice to be able to feel like I could explain why I'm doing this to a professional at a big bank and they would give me a thumbs up. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's a, that is a good, you know what I mean? great statement. And, and you're at you're 100 percent right. You're 100 percent right about that. You know, we, we, we look at and it sounds simplistic. Um, in the way that we, you know, you think just GDP, interest rates and inflation. And is that all is that all it is? Obviously, there there are complexities to it and the, the relationship between, you know, the three as well as and the impact, obviously, of monetary policy. But ultimately, things just don't we never confuse simple with easy, right? Chess right. is a simple game to learn. Doesn't mean it's it's easy. There's got to be some, you know, what I mean, there's got to be some work that goes into it. Any high level skill, and trading is is one of the highest levels, you know, things that you could possibly do in life. We don't really, you know, 
take we take that for granted when you think about it we're up against the masters of the universe <laughs> we're up against right. you know people who've got we've got you know uh, billions of managing billions etc but we're still riding on the coattails right of those guys because it's not like we're smarter than them or anything like that we just now know what they're looking for and understand you know where prices are likely to go in the medium to long term because short term generally as you know it's generally to do with liquidity, you know, market makers providing liquidity, et cetera, you know, auctioning. But we have a high degree of accuracy when it comes to understanding what should happen in the uh, medium to long term. So right. so what maybe was one of uh, like a, a light bulb moment? Do you have like a light bulb moment or an aha moment where you it just, you know, or maybe many, for example, because sometimes you have, I had multiple, right, when I was, when I was uh, being mentored by, you know, Mark Chapman, um, I, had, I had so many, but maybe just go into maybe one where you had like a kind of like an aha moment, a light bulb moment where things just really kind of became a bit clearer for you. I, I, I want to say it was on the, the stop hunt uh, teachings. Okay. Where uh, you talked about the, uh, the order flow equation. Yes. Right. And the, the different types of traders there are mm -hmm. and how they how they look at stuff and place their stops and mm -hmm. how that becomes fodder <laughs> for <laughs> liquidity to help move, you know, markets in, in yeah. different ways. And so as I was going through that, it, it hurt and I was happy but it hurt <laughs> because I have been all of those things, yeah. you know, before now. And I was like, oh, man, you yeah. know, you and so it's just realizing like this, this is me crossing over to the other side oh, yeah. where a better perspective and some patience will allow me to not get caught in these uncomfortable things. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I have experienced CPR as that trader many times. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Yeah. Me too. And it's, it's, it's funny, right? Because you you, you kind of have to go through that to really understand the other side. You know, I've mentored traders who I've said, you know, you have to have kind of like a year to two years experience before you join me. And they've kind of crept in, you know, as brand new traders and trying to teach a concept like capture pain relief to those traders who haven't really been the breakout trader or the retracement trader in certain circumstances and understood, you know, the FOMO and loss aversion bias is very difficult for them to understand because you, you, it's almost like you have to go through it to then it, for it to really sink in. Right. Yeah. I, uh, in January of 2020, yeah, I, I was long, I think on the Australian dollar. Okay. And at the end of January, COVID happened <laughs> right. and I had, no idea about risk events and how that could shift markets massively. Right. I didn't, I didn't know any of those things. Right. And I blew probably 60% of my account I, in, in three are. days. Yeah. Like 2020, you know, so when you talk like loss aversion bias and all the rest of it, like I was, I was in it. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that's, I, you know, those types of things like, Oh, this is being discussed, <laughs> you know, and I start planning like, OK, you know, these trades might might have something go on with them. So let's let's move stop losses and let's, you know, take that in. Just I think learning how to not lose money has been more valuable yeah. and, and probably one of the biggest things that I I get most excited about yeah. with understanding fundamentals is I, I know when to stay away and I know when to get out yeah. a lot better than I ever did before. Yeah. And, and and we all lose trades, right? Losing is, is and, and I guess maybe even the word losing has negative, um, I guess, uh, connotations around it, right? You know, losing, you're a loser. And it's not that it's just, it's just a, a cost of doing business, right? right. But, you know, in, in, in its simple forms, when, when we win, we win big, right? And when we lose, we lose small. And as long as, you know, you you on every tra on every trade you try to maximize your risk reward. You, you'll be fine in the long run. And what's fundamentals and risk sentiment does and understanding that is it helps us with that dynamic, right? Right. You know, it it it, it really does. So um, 
understanding fundamentals and I guess some of the strategies and all the strategies that we that we trade from daily supply and demand zones to uh, stop hunts to CPR and um, you know you're you're fortunate enough to have had the opportunity to you know um, to 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 understand I guess and learn um, Mark Chapman who's my mentor as well and good friend um his um market maker business model i i i don't like even calling it a strategy because as you know it's not a just right. strategy to, 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 to say it's a strategy is like it's just it's actually disrespectful i think <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean it's the business model right of what of what actually happens so understanding what i've provided at on top of that that the, the highest of high level um uh, you know, market maker uh, business model. Would you say that there is anything really else to learn about the markets? No, um, I, I think you know the fundamental analysis allows me to understand directionally where we're going mm -hmm. um, in, in the medium to long term, yeah. and the market maker business model fills in everything that's happening tactically like right now yeah and so being able to evaluate from the large picture all the way down to what's the plan for next week mm -hmm. at this point it's just gaining more knowledge refining the skill set to be able to do a good evaluation yeah. manage your risk and it's just now it's just executing a yeah. solid process yeah. for how you look at markets yeah um and, and this comes into, I guess, mastery, right? From This is where, because at some point you have to, I guess, stop trying to, and this doesn't go to necessarily you, but anybody who's who's listening, because as traders, and you've been here as well, I guess, um, is we end up chasing our tails when it comes to strategies, yeah? Right. We, we always try and go for the shiny new toy, the thing that's promising to make us, you know, a, a million pound in, you know, the next two weeks, et cetera. Um, and as soon as we kind of accept, you know, we have a couple of maybe losses, we kind of move on to something or we try to refine this and refine that and add this to this strategy and take it away and try to make it better and better. But, and that's a natural and normal thing, but at some point there comes mastery, right? And mastery is really understanding and following a process and then getting feedback on that, right? And then repeating that. So you get the process, you do the process, you get the outcome. Was it a desired outcome? Yes or no. If it wasn't, it, whether it was or it wasn't, did I follow the process? Yes. Okay. Brilliant. I'll just keep doing that. If I didn't follow the process or came outside of that process, then right. I get, you get the feedback from, for example, me, or you get it from Mark, and then you just refine, and then you master, and then you refine, and then you master, and that's how mastery comes. And, and I it's, it's been interesting because I, I also realized that I had to learn how to become a good student again. Yeah. And accepting critical feedback on your ideas is also a skill, right? Yeah. To to say, hey, you know, it, it might be harsh, but they're trying to make me better. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's good that I'm hearing that I'm wrong and yeah. being shared with like, here's here's the correct way to look at this yeah. before you go out and, you know, lose a bunch of money and learn it the hard way. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that is a fantastic point. A really, really good point. You, We have to learn to be students. We have to, because... It took me, um, I think, about nearly about a year and a half, two years before I really said to myself, well, actually, probably about a year before I said to myself, all right, I'm really going to listen to Mark, right? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because I was still mixing the max matching strategies. I was still trying to refine what Mark was saying to me when I was learning by adding all these different indicators. And it was just, again, it's just a natural in inclination. And as you say, you have to actually, part of being... Um, I guess, uh, 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 I guess, come overcoming certain psychological barriers and things like that, and trading barriers is actually, as you say, learning to become a good student, taking that feedback, that criticism, and not taking it personally. Just knowing that the person who's, you know, if you ha do have a genuine mentor who wants the best for you, you know, is to actually just trust 
in that process, trusting what they're saying, following the process and seeing how it works. Because it's either it's either the strategy doesn't work or you're not trading it properly, right? And we need to right. find out who it is. <laughs> is, it, is it the strategy or is it you? Um, I have a note in my office um, that says, you know, your, your mentors have already made those mistakes. So don't recreate the wheel. Ah, oh, uh, brilliant. Right. Brilliant. They've, they've, whatever I'm thinking of, they've probably already tried it and determined <laughs> that it's not a good thing. <laughs> exactly. So don't yeah. get cute. Just, you yeah. know, trust that, like, yeah. you know, if it, if it had value, they would leave an opening for that to be a part of the strategy they're teaching. But. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, a, that's a, another brilliant point, Justin. I, I try to explain that to new traders and who come into the group all the time because we get that, you know, you see that in the group sometimes where traders will say, well, what about this? And what about that? And it's like, well, I've been there. You know what I mean? I've been there. You know, yep. just, just focus on this. I try to get everyone to kind of focus, you know, the ones that aren't too focused or the ones that are generally new and trying to learn right i say just focus on this don't worry about that just eliminate yeah. the noise whatever you think you may know about fundamentals trust me i've done it i've looked at it no, 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 no. <laughs> this is what it is yep but it's a it's a it's a, it's a great great um point that you make so um let's get into some trading matter of fact and um you know, I think I, uh, you know, before the, the podcast, we were talking about, you know, maybe your last uh, couple of trades, maybe that you've taken that you'd want to share um, and really kind of just break down, you know, maybe the trade idea um, first and then maybe like the technicals. So the trade idea being why you decided to get long or short on, a, on, on that currency pair. And then we can go into a bit about, you know, the technical strategy, maybe the level, the entry, um, the risk reward, etc. So um, you were talking about the the the, the dolly the I can't even get it out now the dollar yen right the dollar yes. yen was 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 a trade that you took um, and you said it was on the uh, was it on the twenty second uh, of February I think February yeah February the twenty second I think it was you said something somewhere around yep. there. yeah so. Um... So, so, so fundamentally, what, what, why did you choose the dollar, the dollar yen? What was it about the dollar yen? So fundamentally, um, the Bank of Japan has no interest at all in raising interest rates anytime mm -hmm. in the near future. Mm -hmm. um, I knew that there was, at that time, there was a lot of escalating discussion around Russia and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And so the inevitability of a, a risk event um, would would prevail or, or, or come about. And if it did, that would also work in favor of the trade. Wow. Um, the market's expectations for the US with inflation, I think at that time was 7%. Yeah. Um, and GDP was uh, much higher than the 2% target. And mm -hmm. so the, the expectation was that we would oh, be working towards inflation. A, Sorry, you said you mean inflation was higher than the 2% target? Uh, GDP was higher and inflation was at seven. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And so, um, we were expecting a 25 basis point hike mm -hmm. with the talk of possibly even higher. And so that divergence fundamentally was sufficient for me to, to say that I wanted to get in long. Mm -hmm. And so I had started marking off, um, demand zones uh -huh. and, uh, right around the end of February, um, it had pulled back into that demand zone. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the technical entries that you kind of teach us in the strategy all kind of came together. Yeah. And so I took a, a long position yeah. and uh, held on to it. And uh, it has worked out really, really well. Brilliant. What, what was the risk reward on, on, on this trade that you took, though? I got out at around five to one risk okay. reward. Brilliant. Um, psychology is one of those things I'm still working on is, okay. is becoming comfortable holding trades for much longer periods of time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still getting there. Um, and that's, that's one of the things I'm improving this year. So. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a work in progress. Right. And, um, again, I always kind of 
I guess recommend, I guess, uh, that traders maybe just leave a small position open, right? Just in case, just in case yep. it does run like this, right? And um, with the with the dollar yen, and I know you you probably watch my uh, my weekly videos where where we talk about we go over bank the bank analysis, right? We look at you know certain forecasts from ING, from MUFG, and from um uh, ANZ bank for example right and a lot of the banks that we were looking at in the analysis was predicting i think like a 117 118 right they were looking at prices around here when you know when 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 prices when you were getting in around here right but, um but just i guess holding trades is something that fundamentals can help you with and the fact that you held for a 5 to 1 is an achievement in itself because there's lots of traders that would have taken profit way before that you know they would have snatched the profits so because you know depending on if they've lost you know maybe a couple of previous trades or you know what i mean it's just a, a, a maybe a fear of the you know prices going against you where you know you could have taken a three to one and all of a sudden it pulls back and now you're at back at a one to one and you you know you're you're thinking to yourself well i've lost i've lost uh, some money do you know what i mean or not on the unrealized profit but, right. but but great trading regardless, right? Great trading regardless. You got the direction correct. That is what, you know, we we ultimately is what matters. And the fact that you put together a coherent plan, right? A coherent plan and understanding what is likely to happen, as we know, is prob probab um, probabilities. No one can predict the future. But if your plan does work out, potentially, if you would have held on, this could have been you know, uh, 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 maybe a 10 to one, a 15 to one, a 20 to one type trade. And you will get them, Justin. Yeah, <laughs> you, I'm looking you forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> you will, you will, you definitely will. Um, so you also were talking about the, is it the CAD, CAD yen? I think uh, CAD yen? Yeah, I, I think I'm actually looking for an entry on that one Okay. Um, now. Um, yeah me too me too it's it's just it just keeps going higher and higher right um yeah. but as far as the actual trade i think you were talking about it was somewhere around here i think it's january you took that trade. end of january yep. yeah end of january yep came back into that demand zone to so talk us through you know the um i mean we already kind of know about you know the, the japanese yen i guess um and and the bank of japan and how pretty much lagging behind they are when it comes to things like you know interest rates um and even the inflation um and, it, and gdp right but talk about you know canada and why uh, you decided to buy the canadian dollar i want to say that canada had been getting some stronger economic reports yeah. and we're moving towards doing a 25 basis point hike mm -hmm. um coming up, I think, at the end of January, beginning of February. Yeah, they were, yeah. Um, and so with, with Canada's economy getting strong um, and, and oil performing well, um, which is a, a big, the commodity that, that the Canadian dollar is tied to, mm -hmm. um, a lot of things just looked really well when paired with the Japanese yen. And so mm -hmm. once it kind of comes back into that demand zone, um, mm -hmm. I started looking for some entries. Um, and I found that one at the end of January. Yeah. And really. so I took that one and I think on that one, I got out at a two to one. Okay. Yeah. That's, and, and again, that's brilliant, right? Regardless of what anybody else may think about, um, you know, oh, it was only a two to one. The fact that you made money on that trade idea and came up with it yourself is a fantastic achievement. There's many traders that don't do that, right? Or can't even do that, don't even understand. And again, right. it's just little tweaks. Had you held on for a little longer, etc. You know what I mean? It could have been, um, you know what I mean? Up here, that would have been, again, another brilliant, fantastic trade. I mean, it already was, but um, it makes sense, you know, when we think about now what potentially is happening um, fundamentally and risk sentiment wise, traders might be thinking to themselves, well, why is, you know, price Canadian dollar doing something like this when we're potentially in a risk off environment? And, you know, really the answer to that is, and I've explained this, I guess, in, in the group, but in also um, certain videos on YouTube is that we understood, and I, I was saying this for months and Justin will attest to this, right? That um, 
risk sentiment can push prices to where you want to be a buyer, right, Jess? Absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. So so I I always look at whether you know for better or for worse. I always look and I kind of you know tell traders to um to to maybe have the perspective potentially um of understanding that yes we are in a risk off environment and the Japanese yen is a safe haven currency, but if we can time this right, the market is more on than off, right? So if right. you can time these pullbacks where at this top point in time, um, you know, we get in, you know, uh, uh, long here, for example, right? And we don't know what's going to happen, you know, the next day, the day after, the day after. We could, for example, you know, be more, more risk on, right? And if that's the case, then this would going to look like an absolute bargain. If prices are in a risk off, all we do is we look for, you know, maybe a demand zone. Better entry, lower. That's exactly it, or, or, or better prices. That's exactly it. Because the upside potential, we don't mind losing one or two or three trades because if we get this right and this trade idea right, that could be a, a 10, 15, 20, 30 to one type trade. Right. You know what I mean? And having that confidence, um, understanding why you're looking to, you know, buy the Canadian dollar and sell the Japanese yen, um, you know, it is for me, you know, invaluable, right? And it's you know the, the rules to the to the to the game are ultimately, right? Yes. You know, so um, but yeah, Justin, thank you for uh for doing this and um really just uh offering to do the interview. And um, I guess if anyone else is still listening, because you know, YouTube uh gives the, the, the algorithm, um, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but generally people will drop off after you know, maybe five ten minutes right <laughs> but, for okay. anybody, but for anybody <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's massive it's, you see a curve right it's it's like you get like the time horizon and uh you know that's time and then you get like the viewers right and then you'll see like a spike at the beginning like that might be like say two minutes you know four minutes etc you get a big spike and then for some reason you get like a big drop off and it goes like that you know, it goes like this so by the time you kind of get to the end of the video, maybe what are we in? We're in like 30 minutes, maybe something like that. 47 minutes. But yeah, we've been talking for 47 minutes just. See, it's, <laughs> it's, it's that easy when you get into it. It is. It is. There's, 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 there's you know, it's like there's, 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 you know, not too many people are going to, you know, uh, uh, stay to the whole video. Right. But for anyone who is listening, anyone who is listening and watching still, what would you say uh, to those people with regards to, you know, the benefits of mentoring and, you know, just joining Trading 180? I would say that you should join because having a community of people who are actively engaged in sharing the knowledge, the resources, the articles and the understanding of, of how that adds color to whatever you're doing with trading should just be a fundamental that that all people have. Yeah. I think understanding risk sentiment, understanding monetary policy and fundamental analysis as it pertains to what is moving markets will help increase the quality of whatever you do tactically to execute your trades. You know, it, it just, it's the difference between being a hobbyist and being a professional. Yeah, yeah, it sure is. It sure is. And uh, Justin, I thank you again for this interview. Um, brilliant trading, mate. And um, yeah, we'll just keep, you know, I'll keep mentoring, supporting. And um, yeah, we'll get you, you know, if you're not already, we're, we're going to definitely get you to where you want to be um, very, very soon. Absolutely. Thanks, Leon. No worries. Take care, Just. Thanks again. All right. Take Bye -bye. care.